Today, we're going to do a traditional ILS approach, and we're going to fly it using a really solid dual axis autopilot like the one on the G1000, though you can use the techniques we'll show on any platform like the GI275, for example. We're on an IFR flight to Baltimore Washington International. Even though it's a Bravo airport, it's actually somewhat general aviation friendly. They have a runway, 33 right, that's used just for GA and doesn't have any of the big iron from the airlines to compete with. We're currently going direct to BWI following GPS guidance with GPS mode active on the autopilot as you see in green there, as well as our altitude bugged at 2000 feet. We've gotten the ATIS at Baltimore and we're currently talking to Potomac Approach. November 518 Foxtrot Tango, contact Potomac Approach on 119.7. 119.7, 518 Foxtrot Tango. We'll set that in and flip it active. This is the final controller for Baltimore. Potomac Approach, Skyhawk 518 Foxtrot Tango, 2000 Information, Quebec. November 518 Foxtrot Tango, Potomac Approach, expect vectors for the ILS 33 right, Baltimore Altimeter 3004. Expect vectors for ILS 33 right, 518 Foxtrot Tango. The word expect from ATC is a prompt for us to pull up the approach plate for the ILS 33 right, which we'll do in four flight, and to also load it into our automation. On the G1000, we hit proc, then enter for select approach, then scroll to ILS 33 right. We're expecting vectors, so hit enter. We can set the minimums for the ILS, which are 333 feet. We're just going to load the approach for now. We were only told to expect it. We haven't been given an instruction to turn yet, so we're still following the original guidance to BWI. As we brief the approach, we set some frequencies. Tower is on 119.4, so we put it on COM1 standby. We can also put ground on COM2, 121.9. The GPS automatically puts the localizer frequency 111.95 onto NAV1 active for us. Continuing the brief, we see that besides the localizer frequency, we also need the Baltimore VOR. There's a slight variation in this approach to some others out there. The distance markings for fixes like duds and Oriole are in DME, but it's not the DME from the localizer antenna, but from the Baltimore VOR. You can see on the airport diagram that the VOR is offset a bit from runway 33 right on the field. We'll set the frequency for the VOR after we activate the approach. Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango, turn right heading 150. Right heading 150, 518 Foxtrot Tango. So we'll twist the heading knob to 150, then hit HDG to switch over to heading mode, and the autopilot begins our turn. We can now activate the approach. The pink needles in the HSI are replaced by green ones picking up the ILS. You may notice suspend mode activated on the HSI and on the bottom. This is a quirk of the simulator and wouldn't show up on the real G1000. We'll work around it later. We're going to set the Baltimore VOR on NAV2, 115.1. Let's also do this. We hit the PFD option soft key once, then bearing one a few times to toggle the NAV2. We have a distance readout to the Baltimore VOR, as well as a bearing pointer showing the direction to the station. We're on what's considered the downwind leg for runway 33 right. We'll stay on this until ATC turns us onto a base leg, a few miles outside of the final approach fix. So we'll be here for a while. Also, this being Baltimore, there are likely going to be some fast moving GA jets coming in that we'll need to be slotted in with. ATC could potentially keep us on this downwind leg longer in order to get those guys in first. And of course, we're going to be crossing the extended center line of 33 left, where the big airliners are going to be coming in, so ATC will make sure there's enough room for us to putt putt across. November 518 Foxtrot Tango, turn left heading 070. Left heading 070, 518 Foxtrot Tango. Now, what's going to happen next is coming quickly, so it's important to anticipate it. ATC will give us a turn to a heading which allows for a 30 degree intercept of the approach course, which is 335. So a turn to 360 is coming. That's not all though. If you're familiar with the PTAC acronym, Position, Turn, Altitude, Clearance, you know the structure of the call ATC is about to make. You should make the turn as soon as you start hearing that call and set up the autopilot. What that'll mean is pressing the APR button to arm approach mode. So we're listening for the call and we're going to turn to the heading and hit APR. November 518 Foxtrot Tango, you're four miles from Oriole, turn left heading 360, maintain 2000 until intercepting localizer, cleared ILS 33 right approach. 
Left heading 360, maintain 2000 until intercept, clear ILS 33 three right, 518 Fostra Tango. Notice that after we hit APR, LOC and GS now show up and the status bar is armed. We're still on heading mode, set to 360, but when the localizer needle comes in, localizer mode goes active, and the autopilot will turn to intercept. The same will happen later with the glide slope. We maintain 2000 until the glide slope comes in. As it comes down, we reduce power indicated over the MFD on the right and configure for our approach. Glide slope mode goes active now and we start down. November 518 Fostra Tango, contact Baltimore Tower. Contact Tower 518 Fostra Tango. Baltimore Tower, Skyhawk 518 Fostra Tango, ILS 33 right. November 518 Fostra Tango, Baltimore Tower, winds 270 at 13, runway 33 right, clear to land. Runway 33 right, clear to land, 518 Fostra Tango. Now, in training, you may have been taught that you use pitch to control airspeed and power to control altitude or glide slope. These are good stick and rudder fundamentals, but on a fully automated coupled approach, it simply won't work. Here, if we reduce power, rather than start losing altitude and going below the glide slope, the autopilot pitches up to maintain the glide slope, causing us to slow down. We want to maintain 80 knots on this approach, so in order to speed up, we need to increase power. On these coupled approaches then, it's power for airspeed, pitch for altitude, and we don't control pitch here. We're taking this approach all the way down to minimums, so it's good that we have some help from the synthetic vision of the PFD, so we can see the runways. The wind is out of the west, a left quartering headwind, pushing us to the right. Our crab has us pointing left of the runway, but as you look at the little meatball showing where we're headed, it should be right over the approach end of the runway. The decision altitude is 333 feet. It's bugged on the altitude tape. Just as we reach it, the runway comes into sight and we can switch off the autopilot and transition to visual. If you decide to change your configuration here for landing, be careful that you don't end up back in IMC or you'll have to go missed. Remember, increasing flaps will cause a momentary rise or at least a delay in the descent rate. With a long enough runway and slow enough plane, you may consider leaving your approach configuration in all the way through and just floating a bit longer to land. It's up to you. We'll put it down and be handed off to ground for our taxi into Signature, where we'll probably be met by some fabulously high ramp fees, I'm sure. So that's just a quick run through of a typical ILS approach using a modern autopilot. Check out the Flight Insight website linked here and in the description for our ground schools and more training today.